all the time. I want to appreciate the name of the Lord for His grace and His mercy upon our life. May His name be praised forever and ever. Amen. We want to continue in our teaching. I want to thank God for His grace given to us to continue our teaching once again. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you and appreciate you. We want to thank you for your goodness and mercy. As we go into today's teaching, once again, open our eyes of understanding. Take away every distraction and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your glorious name. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. I want to thank God for His grace today and for His mercy. As we go into today's teaching, uh, we're going to learn some vital information. As we know, we're talking about tribulation, uh, lesson 7 today. We want to see a particular major part that talks about Satan's doom, Satan's end, or Satan's damnation. The end of Satan. Most of the time, the devil doesn't want people to know about his end. Don't forget, he's one of the creatures of God. I would like us to read a particular place. I'm reading from the Holy Bible, Revelation. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. He says, The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and there will be tormented day and night forever and ever. As you can see, that particular place is talking about the doom of Satan, the total end of Satan. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The devil doesn't want people to know. Those who rush to him for help are rushing into a wrong place because devil is to deceive the entire world to make them come to the same last dwelling place for himself and that is the lake of fire which we as a believer must be very very careful not to start after starting with God and now ending with the devil it's going to be disastrous and which is going to attract more divine discipline from God. And for those who are here to place their faith in Christ, the devil has nothing to offer. You can see his hand. His hand is disastrous. It's going to end in the lake of fire with all its power and everything he has. So, as we know, we stopped here the Bible chiasm talking about the two uh, parallel information concerning what the scripture says, looking at the creation that God created, heaven and earth, and looking at this heaven and earth will be destroyed and the world will have another new creation, new heaven and new earth. Man's rules lost are the fall which is part of the deceptive plan of the devil to ensure that man sin against God and take over the mantle of power from man. So man loves the mantle of power at the Garden of Eden when he disobeyed God. But this power and rulership will be restored at the millennium when Jesus Christ himself we rule for 1,000 years. At that point in time, devil, the Satan, will be, will be in prison 
for that period of time. Then we have Christ's redemption. Christ redeemed the world. He came as a lamb, as if he has no power, but his first mission of his first advent is for him to deliver the world, to release to us salvation of God. But at this point in time, he came, we identified the cross with him. He was nailed on the cross, and on the third day, he died for everyone. No matter what you call yourself, or who you, who you call yourself, then then, what is going to happen in terms of the second position of Christ is going to rule, Christ rule. Is known as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And these are the things that we're going to see the repeated pattern in reverse order. So this is called Bible chiasm, and this uh, is what is going to happen. So after redemption, we're going to have tribulation, and tribulation is coming to rule the earth for 1,000 years. Okay. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, don't forget we're talking about the doom of Satan as is very, very sure. And I, the Lord, will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman, and between your seed and a seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his ill. Now, this is one of the the promises that God made for man concerning salvation. Actually, this is the first promise of salvation that God made for humanity. Looking about, talking about His love. I say, and I, that is the Lord, will put enmity between you, the Satan that deceived the woman, for he disobeyed God, and our seed. Can you see? He is the seed of the woman, not the seed of the man. And this is talking about the virgin birth. Talking about the virgin birth, the seed of the woman. And we're talking about the seed of the woman will be male. He, who is Jesus Christ, futuristic. When, Jesus, when God was pronouncing this particular promise, I think he will be thinking maybe all this thing we have in the name will four or five years to come. Or 20 or 100 years to come, not knowing that God has a perfect plan. So that reason why the devil perform different type of children slaughtering in many of the history of the Bible. You remember when the children of Israel were in slavery, he ordered them being killed when Jesus Christ was born. And he ordered many children under the age of two to be killed, to be slaughtered. Because he doesn't want this promise to come to reality. And this E, the seed of the woman, just one seed, not many seeds, shall bruise the head of the Satan. And you, that is the Satan itself, shall bruise his heel. And you can see this is what happened. When Satan bruised the heel of Jesus was when we have the cross of Christ, when he gave himself to be to be crucified for humanity. He died for our sin so that we can have salvation. So and this is a promise of God, promise of the birth of Christ and and the purpose of the birth of Christ is for salvation. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Gosh, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under the feet shortly. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. We can see Jesus has given us a tactical victory over Satan. So, okay, the devil has been bruised on the head, but the devil is still alive. Yes, he's just like a dead animal or a dead snake that has been killed and is still moving around. Thank God for the analogy and the animal description used to identify with Satan. Uh, you know, when snake is being killed, even for about two, three hours, 
and you know that there is no life there, you will still be seeing the little movement of the snake. And even when the snake is totally dead, and you put the snakes in the fire, you will see another movement. So those who did not know will be thinking that there is still life there. So what is happening? They will have been sentenced, but the sentence has not been carried out. As you have seen the first place we read before, uh, that's talking about um, uh, Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. If you can see, remember, Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. Talking about what we read that Satan himself, the devil that deceived them, the entire world, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. We are the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So don't forget that is going to be the end of Satan. So let's move to the other reading. Do you know why Jesus needs to come back again? The reason why Jesus needs to come back again because the redemption of nature expects it. I want us to know that the nature itself was affected when Adam and Eve sinned against God, that sin of disobedience. Some thought that the sin only affected only humanity, but I want to tell you the sin affects everything that God ever created before man, the last creation of God. So what do we see? Every other thing that God has created is affecting man today talks about the weather. The weather is affecting man. Today we call it climate change. In Pakistan, so a few weeks ago, we have flood taking over the communities. Thousands of people were dead. Recently, in Nigeria, we had about another flood taking over and what happened? The people are dying in their hundreds. Houses are destroyed. These are nature. Another one we can see the way the sun is shining, descending in some European countries and, and America. Just because of the sun, we have consumption of the bush and forest. These are uh, nature that God has created, affecting man. Look the animals. There are some animals, we call them wild animals. They are being caged. If they are released, what will happen to them? They will devour and destroy man. It's because of the sin of disobedience of Adam and, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that caused these problem of the nature. So the nature are expecting their redemption, not just man that is being redeemed, not just man that is also expecting his own redemption. What is the redemption of man that God is even, that man uh, is expecting, that God has assured man that is the glorification of our mortal body that will be transformed. And who are those that are going to have this wonderful transformation of their nature of their body. These are believers in Christ. The same thing is applicable to the nature that God has created. Every other thing God has created, the cause that God has given to man will be reversed. To the nature will be reversed. For example, when God calls Adam, God said to Adam, yes, because you have obeyed your wife, you are going to till the land and the land will produce tosses for you, weeds for you. The, the potential of the land to give you good yield will be reduced to the minimal level. A reason why today you see farmers using different type of fertilizer 
to ensure a better yield of their produce. At the end of the day, the fertilizer destroy the, the remaining uh, quality nature of the land. That's what the fertilizer does at the end of the day. We are yet to have a good part of the nature of the land. So the the land will be we we we, we and a nature entirely we have their nature be redeemed back. And we are going to see what the scripture says about that. That is in Romans chapter eight from verse nineteen to twenty five. Which says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory we shall be revealed in, in us. What are the suffering? Every, every believer in Christ Jesus are suffering presently, uh, looking at the current challenges and um, uh, that believers are encountering every day. Looking that devil is the is the, is the accuser of brethren that always come over to accuse us. Verse nineteen says, "For the earnest expectation of the creation, the nature, the creature. So the endless expectation of the creation, that's a nature, eagerly await for the revealing of the sons of God." So there is expecting that the sons of God will be revealed. Who are the sons of God? Children of God, believers. So they are expecting our own redemption because they know once we are being redeemed, their own time of being, uh, being redeemed is also closed. The moment they realize that the sons of God have been redeemed, that is, we have our glorification, then their own redemption is so close. Verse 20 says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in a hope. Now, the creation that is under this curse, is not under the cause because they committed a crime. But God, in His mercy, has a plan for the redemption of the creation. Talking about the nature itself. Look in the land, look in the sky, the solar system, the animals and the forest and everything beneath, even the fish, the sh You see how many I was told that according to research that the lion killed about some thousands of human beings every year. The same thing looking at the shark, the whale, inside the sea. Yeah, a lot of people have lost their life because of these animals, this creature inside the water. So these are the things that is affecting our world and our planet, thinking that man can restore is no man can do that except Jesus Christ himself. Verse 21 says that because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Can you see that the creature that is under bondage that is expecting the revelation, the revealing part of the children of God, the redemption, the last phase of the, our salvation, which is our glorification, though they are subjected into futility, though it is not in their willingness to be under this subjection, but what happened in <coughs> hope in Christ Jesus, he said they will be delivered from this bondage of corruption. They will be delivered. That is, it is futuristic, not now. Immediately we have the rapture taking place. They know that their time of redemption is so close. And they will also have the same liberty that God 
he is going to give to his children. Don't forget, it is God's children that caused this initial problem at the Garden of Eden. And once God's children has been redeemed, finally, they also will have the redemption of their nature, the way it has been before, before the fall of man. Another what we are going to see in the time of uh, millennium, a rapid uh, way of good things, looking at the atmosphere. We are not going to have what we call the climate change again. Everything will come back to normal the way they were when God created them. The Bible said the lion and the lamb, they will dwell together, live together. The lion will eat straw, that is weeds. The lion will eat grasses. In other words, the taste for blood will be gone forever. That is how God initially created the world. The Bible makes to understand, even the children will put their hand and play with snakes, pythons, and they will never hurt them. But we can't try that today. So these the, are the way God has created. And this experience is going to be the will be, will be realistic during the time of millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be a wonderful time. And those are going to have a privilege of having this wonderful experience as the children of God. If you are here to place your faith in Christ, this is a wonderful time for you to place your faith in Him because faith alone in Christ alone will give you the salvation that God has designed for humanity. Your works, your righteousness, your morality cannot end you salvation. Salvation comes from Jesus Christ only. I would like to read the book of, um, I think, um, let's say, the book of at at four verse twelve at of apostle chapter four verse twelve says no is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men which by which we must be saved so we have seen people are seeking for salvation in different uh, different places on different people or from different religion salvation is not in religion for those who believe in religion salvation is not in your good works for those who believe in morality salvation is not in uh, uh, in arms that you are offering salvation is only lie in God through Jesus Christ our Lord so there's no way one can be saved without passing through our Lord Jesus Christ. I continue from verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groan and labor with bath pants together until now. The creation that God has created, they are believing that, oh, one day they will be delivered from this pain that they are passing through, what man has cost them. Verse 23 says, Not only that, but we also have the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly awaiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. As I've said before, that now the creation, the nature, they want their redemption. But it's going to be in phases. The first phase is going to be the redemption of the believers. And the last phase of the redemption of the believer is glorification. Which we have is a three tests of salvation. The first test of salvation is talking about justification. In justification, man is being declared the righteousness of God by placing his faith in Christ. The second phase of salvation is sanctification. Man is being made the righteousness of Christ by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, by the word of God that dwells in man, and by the willingness 
in man through the help of God, the Holy Spirit, to do the will of God. So man is being sanctified on daily basis. Man is being saved from the sinful power. In other words, during sanctification, man has the power over sin through the availability of God's grace given to man. Not all believers will experience this. It's only the believer or believers that actually align with the will of God, which is going to be that is being inferring with the Spirit of God constantly and being controlled by God the Holy Spirit you don't allow sin nature to control your body and by constant renewing of your mind by the Word of God and with this parameter available you'll be able to do the will of God take a rightful decision to please God so this is a second uh, uh, phase of salvation or test of salvation and the third one which is the glorification which is the last part the first one what was saved was our spirit man the second one what was saved is our our soul that is being saved on a daily basis and the third one that will be saved is our physical body though this current body could have sickness could have um, any form of disease and any form of problem challenges that we are facing that will seek some experts medical experts and some psychology some you no know, we are seeing different type of experts so that we can have a better body but there is a hope for believers across the world those who have died in the past those who are still living now and those that will still be believer in future there is going to be redemption of our body that is the third phase of salvation or the third thesis of salvation that is the glorification of our body and that is what is called the redemption of our body the redemption of our body talks about what will happen to us during the rapture our body will be transformed and this is a vein that the nature that god has created i expect once they realize that rapture has taken place they just need to be given seven years that seven years of of tribulation where there's going to be another greatest disaster on earth they know that just after these seven years their nature will be redeemed just as the body of believers will be redeemed verse 24 says for we were saved in this hope but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees so all what we're talking about it is futuristic because it is hope in christ that what christ has promised us don't forget we have been justified we have been sanctified and our glorification is futuristic it is in hope verse 25 says but if we hope for what we did not see we eagerly wait for it with perseverance and that is the reason why that we that the places we have read before that the creator are eagerly waiting for their restoration for their restoration the creator including man and the nature the creation that god has made they are eagerly waiting you can see they are eagerly waiting i will i will i will show you the other place verse 19 say for the endless expectation of the creation eagerly wait for the revelation of the sons of God you can see the nature are eagerly waiting and also we see man is also eagerly waiting for the restoration of this and you have seen and we have seen that according to the tactical victory that God has given to us through 
the cross of Christ that devil has been won so and that is what is going to happen to our nature very soon now looking at what we have here now this is the world we find ourselves and in this world because of the sin of man at the garden of Aden then the world turned to this it's a perfect world before but at the garden of Aden Adam and Eve sinned against God and what happened we have instruction in the world sin came into the world death came into the world disease came into the world pain came into the world suffering came to the world emotional pain came into the world anguish came into the world so everybody is in one challenge or the other as long as you are human being on earth the world can never offer you anything good the world itself is in pain is in struggle believing their restoration awaiting the revelations of the sons of God but thank God because of the cross of Christ the cross of Christ brought redemption to humanity and that gave us a tactical victory that with this that even though man have sinned against God and they have turned their back against him but thank God for the cross of Christ instead of us to go to hell we are going to have a new life in Christ second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says if any man be in Christ he is a new creation and that is what we have gotten through the death and the barrier and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ so don't forget we talk about chiasm talking about the reverse uh, nature that we're going to have uh, that the world we experience that ma we experience that political power we experience and now the world that God created perfectly that is being transformed into useless and painful disease uh, world but that world will also be changed from this current nature we find ourselves to a wonderful new world let's see new heaven and new earth and that is what god will give to uh, us very soon uh, but even from here this is where we are still going to have the nature that will still be restored and that will be the the eager expectation of the nature this is where it's going to take place this is where we're going to have the the, the the millennia taking place. This is where we're going to have the tribulation taking place. After the end of man in this world, then we're going to have a new heaven and new heart. So, all these pains, disease, suffering, emotional, emotional trouble, trauma, and anguish, all these things will be reversed during the 1000 reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read here. I'm going to stop here. And Revelation chapter 21 from verses 4 to 5 says, The God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for former things that passed away, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, high make all things new so this is going to be at the new heaven and the new earth he said that there will not be any tears from their eyes again in other words there will not be sorrow there will not be death death has been dealt with sorrow has been dealt with sin has been dealt with no more crying again no more pain anymore for those of all that are passing through challenges that we do cry silently, that we, oh, if death is coming, oh, we are of age, or we are expecting death, I want to tell you a time is coming in future that as a believer in Christ, you will not have any of this experience again. This is a negative experience that God will take away 
from every believer no more tears no more death no more sorrow no more crying no more pain these are the struggle of the world and this is what god promised his children and immediately even after when we have the true uh, the the rapture the glorification of our body we will start to be experienced part of this wonderful blessings that god has designed for us and he said behold i make all things new he has the power to make all things new so i pray as we have listened to this message the lord continue to bless you thank you and god bless you let's pray father we thank you for your grace upon our life open our eyes to see this truth of your word blessed be your holy name as we have studied your word continue to open our eyes to the truth and let your word transform our life and those who are here to place their faith in you the lord continue to use this word to open their eyes to the truth and let the truth of god's word set them free thank you heavenly father blessed be your holy name in jesus name we pray amen thank you for listening to this message and i pray the lord continue to be with every one of you now i want you to continue to like share it send it to your friends and your loved ones very soon it's going to be uploaded on youtube also watch it send it to your loved ones so that the life of people will change the life of the people we have uh